Hello there. Today we're going to talk about IELTS vocabulary and there's lots of tips. It's divided up into about three parts. A lot of my students have been asking me about IELTS vocabulary. So what I thought I'd do today is do the podcast, but do it with a student of mine who has a, who had a few questions and she's just going to um, ask a question when she's got a doubt. So this is Maria. Say hi, Maria. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get going. So it's going to be divided into three parts. Voca um, an introduction to the vocabulary, uh, collocations. Then we're going to look at some easy essay sentences to memorize, to put into the essay. And then um, some topic-specific vocabulary and TED Talks. And then at the end, we're going to look at the academic word list. Right then. Okay. okay, yes. Excellent. So, you probably know that the vocabulary represents 25% of your score for both the writing and the speaking. And if we want to get like band 7, band 8, it's strongly recommended you use collocations. All right? Okay. Can you think of any collocations? Do you know what one is, yeah? Yes, a little bit, but <laughs> more or less. I need to study. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, a collocation uh, from Wikipedia is a sequence of words or terms that co-occur more often than would be expected by chance. Okay. All right? Yeah. So maybe unemployment benefit, mm -hmm. yeah? Noise pollution. Okay. Th th those are examples of um, collocations. And, yeah, also to get, a, to get those band 7, band 8 scores, topic-specific vocabulary and obviously recommended using words from the academic word list right then okay so collocations improve the way we speak because they, they improve your fluency because what it is is if it's a group a set group of words the native speaker or the the person listening is going to be is going to expect the next words yeah, so it makes it easier to understand. If it's easier to understand, it improves your cohesion and it makes it easier to follow what you're saying. Mm. All right? Yeah. And when you're learning these um, collocations, it's better to learn them all in one, like, chunk, if you get what I mean. So instead of learning noise and pollution, you just learn it together as one word, noise pollution, mm -hmm. but of course, separately. All right? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so when you're actually um, learning these, what you're best doing is, of course, reading lots, but actively reading, and that means going through the text and mm -hmm. underlining them and circling them, mm -hmm. not just sitting there, like, reading, absorbing it, which is good, but it's better if you're there actively um, highlighting and marking the text you're reading. And ebook readers are good for for this and the idea is that we get the vocabulary from the passive from your passive vocabulary which is your ability to recognize it and into your active vocabulary and that's when you are using it in your everyday vocabulary okay. all right yeah okay then so when you are studying of course from like i just said with the active reading what's good is if you see the word and then you write down the whole sentence in which it appears. Mm -hmm. Yeah? And, uh, yeah, of course, then try and use it again during the day. And it's going to be s easier with some uh, vocabulary, like, I don't know, trying to squeeze noise pollution or, I don't know, income inequality into a sentence. Isn't yeah. going to be easy, but yes. at least maybe if you're practicing your writing, it could be a little bit easier. Yeah. All right? Okay then, now we're going to look at some easy sentences to memorize. And this will be useful for your essay writing. Mm -hmm. And it's really, really quick way to improve your score. Because all you have to do is memorize one or two sentences. And then you can just change the adjectives. Or you can change the meaning. Or you can change the time. Mm -hmm. Alright? Yeah. So, let's just have a look at this one. Okay. Um, the issue of, I don't know, uh, income disparity or income inequality in 
Western countries has grown in importance over the past few decades. Yeah. So if we can, if we've got that sentence, how could we change that, um, adapt it to a different type of essay? What, what could we change there? Could you give me another sentence? Sorry, could you repeat? Please? Yeah, yeah. Okay, we've got this sentence. The issue of Western countries has grown yeah. in importance over the past few decades. One alternative would be the issue of uh, wealth in most, or the issue of technology mm -hmm. in most continents has fallen in importance over the past few years. Can you see how we've changed decades for years? Yes. yes. We've changed grown for fallen, mm -hmm. but we've basically got the most. Uh, we've basically got the same structure. Yes. So could you think of another sentence using that structure? Mm, like the issue of politicals in mm, North uh, continents. Yeah, not the the issue of politicians in northern in continents mm, could be or has fallen has has been difficult. Okay. Uh, in these uh, latest years, in these. Okay, yeah, that could be one. And the first parts were correct, but the idea is that you you keep that instead of has been, mm -hmm. we'd put like. Um, in uh, another bear exactly yeah and one that would go well with importance and so we could say has um let's see has disappeared in importance yeah for example something yeah. like that and then over the past few weeks yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. so we could even say the issue of independence in eastern european countries has risen in importance over the past few days or weeks yeah yeah uh-huh so it's, it's a bit tricky to do at first but the idea is that you memorize that structure yeah. the issue of has in importance over the past few days weeks years months <laughs> uh-huh all right let's do another one so we can also reverse the meaning and here we've changed it from dangerous prob dangerous problems to exciting opportunities so um, income equality or age is one of the most dangerous problems facing less developed nations today. And mm -hmm. then we changed it and adapted it for a uh, mm -hmm. for developed countries. Yeah. And we said technological disruption is one of the most exciting opportunities facing developed nations okay. today. All right. Yes. So we change the meaning and make it into a positive one. Mm we can change the view yeah and mm -hmm. this is quite good because it's generally uh, I'll give you the example first however in my view this solution is rather controversial and other solutions need to be found and we can change the viewpoint from my personal view to a general viewpoint and say however from a general viewpoint this solution is rather impractical blah 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 or rather controversial and the advantage of doing this is, is that we make the essay sound more academic by avoiding using the first person. Yeah. Uh -huh, which course. makes it sound more objective. Yes. Right then. Next one. So, um, here are some universal sentences that we could uh, just drop into the sen drop into the body paragraphs or maybe in the introduction, and. These are very good, but we have to use them with caution because we need to get the context correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So we'd say, here's an example. It is undeniable that, um, I don't know, the World Bank or economic development or pollution. Yeah. It is undeniable that is one of the most challenging issues in the Western world. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this sentence you can use in anything there are also studies being performed on a world level to discover the source of these important problems yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> but examiners can spot these sentences so they have to be used with caution mm -hmm. all right of course <laughs> and it's always better to adapt them yeah 
But if you're in a really st sticky, in a really difficult situation, and maybe you're having a bad day and the exam's going bad, if you've got that sentence, you can drop it into any of them. But of course, it's much better if you can adapt it. Yeah. All right. Of <laughs> <laughs> it's too general if you are talking. Exactly. You are writing about something really important. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And if you've used a few of these sentences already, you've got a set of an essay that is just too general, yeah. not specific, and probably has gone off the task response. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then. So, and then the final sentence we could use is one solution proposed by the, and then we could say. IMF or World Bank or the World Health Organization or NATO or whatever is to and then put a solution. Yeah. Okay. Can you think of a sentence that we could? Um, yeah. Can you think of a sentence you could make using that structure? Another structure. For uh, no, 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 no. Use that structure, but mm. maybe adapt that sentence with using that structure to something maybe about, I don't know, pollution or water pollution or something like that? Mm. Yes, of course. Do you want that I make one? Yeah. Uh, one solution proposed by the um, by by Greenpeace, because you can tell the, the you know? Perfect. Okay. Greenpeace, yeah. Um, is to cut down the, the consume of water and mm, use preferable, you can say preferable? No. <laughs> In what? Uh, uh, preferable um, washing machines or... or. Okay. Yeah. One solution proposed by Greenpeace is to cut down on the consumption yeah. of on water consumption, the mm -hmm. collocation, their water consumption. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one solution proposed by Greenpeace is to cut down on water consumption by using economically, mm -hmm. uh, environmentally friendly washing machines or Percent. something like that. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, but it, you see, if we could have used the, the collocation in there, the water consumption, mm -hmm. it would have been good. But using Greenpeace is a very good example because it's something that, one, the examiner can relate to, because everybody knows about Greenpeace. And two, it's exactly, if you're writing about uh, environmental issues, mentioning Greenpeace is exactly the, the right type of tone and the right type of example to use for that kind of essay. Yeah, <laughs> Especially okay. if it's about environmental protection and things like that. Uh -huh. okay. So good. Right then. Here are some more universal sentences all right and mm -hmm. um, so if you've got a pen you might, might want to write these down for the listeners it is fairly easy to comprehend the arguments why this proposal has been made yeah mm -hmm. very universal you can just put this in at the maybe in the introduction uh -huh. there would be at least two facets to this proposal what do facets mean um um Two points of view. Yeah, or two, um, two parts or two components. Yeah. Uh -huh. Good. All right. There is also, however, a strong argument not to implement this proposal. Okay. Okay. So these are quite easy sentences, and then this one, which I recommend most of my students to learn by heart, because it's really very practical. You could say. And this is to give an example. You say, a recent study by the IMF shows that 50% of so-and-so is or are. Yeah? Okay. A recent study by NATO uh, shows that da-da-da. A recent study by the NSPCC shows that. And if you just remember that structure, you could even say a recent study by Greenpeace shows that 50% of the washing machines are... Uh, environmentally harmful to the local water system or something like that. Uh -huh. <laughs> Another sentence, it is widely assumed that, and like we said before, these have, if we use a lot of these, well, if we use these, but also adapt them to our essays, they have a similar effect to the collocation because 
they will improve the cohesion they'll improve the um, the way the essay sounds because it's a natural structure and you've got, you've got higher chance of getting the um, the points for cohesion and coherence and grammatical accuracy that's what I wanted to say grammatical range and accuracy if you're using these exact structures of course your essays are going to be very accurate okay. all right yeah okay now another one use TED talks okay do you use the TED talks sorry but I don't remember what means TED talks <laughs> you know the TED talks the documentaries they do on TED dot ed like educational documentaries ah, okay. yeah well not documentaries sorry talks the the talks by businessmen by scientists ah yes, ah, yes i remember yeah? yes uh, <laughs> sorry <laughs> no worries okay so if you go to the website ieltspodcast.com forward slash ted there there is a big pdf with about 10 ted talks all analyzed and from those talks, I've written down the topic-specific vocabulary they use, the, uh, some, some collocations that you'll hear, and a possible task to question, okay? So the idea is that you go there and you watch the TED Talk video, you identify the collocations that are in front of you on the PDF, and then you write an essay about the TED talk and the question is um, directly related to the TED talk okay oh, yes. and this will give you the opportunity to use the collocations and the vocabulary and write about the topic of the TED talk and there's 10 talks there each corresponding to one IELTS topic so I think there's one about health there's one about technology there's one about globalization so it's it's really useful and you can get that at ieltspodcast.com forward slash ted now the academic word list Do you, have you heard of this before no no <laughs> okay no worries no worries um this list it contains the most common words found in academic texts and what happened was this girl in new zealand at Victoria University she got all these academic tests basically put them into a big machine and then she found the most common words that appeared most frequently uh-huh okay yeah so the idea is that these if you want your writing to sound academic you use words from these lists yeah and here we've got that there's about thousands and thousands hmm. and the top 60 is called sub list one top 60 and here we can see the um, the massive list analyze approach area assess assume authority available okay and it's good to use these in the text all right okay. and of course we can uh, conjugate not conjugate them we can change them from the these are in the root form we can also change it to analysis, um, surface area, or assess, assessment, yeah, yeah, assume, assumption. And we can do those kinds of changes. So, I'll just give you some tips on learning these words. All right. I'll do this quickly because we're almost running out of time. So, the idea, according to the author of the publication, is that if you want to remember these, the best way is to focus on retrieving them yeah mm -hmm. and a good way to do this is to get the translations uh, and check the translations and then memorize the list and then do one list of translations and go back do another list go back and a good website to do this is quizlet quizlet.com yeah that's q U I Z L E T dot com. Have you used that site before? No, never. But no. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's good. It's really good. Hi, the police. Hi. I just. <laughs> 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 this always happens when I do the podcast. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yes. Yeah, in this, in this part of town. 
Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So use Quizlet, and what you can do is you can fill it up with the, the vocabulary and then uh, keep checking it. And Quizlet makes the process a lot faster, and you can also play games there using the vocab. Ah, uh -huh. okay. Wow, well, yeah, I did. But no, we in this web. But ah, no. okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Another way is to memorize the whole phrase. I recommend this way because if you can memorize the whole phrase, like before, you've got the structure and you can adapt the structure to your essays and just change it. All right. Um, next point. So you can also make a lot of associations when you're memorizing it because like we saw before the massive list of all the different words analyze consist can't distribute it can be quite difficult to get to to mem memorize these words so what you can do is make some associations mm -hmm. yeah um like assessment or assessment process yeah a lot of people think IELTS is a pain in the assessment process. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you wanted to memorize the word assessment process, yeah, you could just associate it with IELTS. Yeah, for example. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and if you use associations like that, it just makes the whole process a lot easier. All right. Okay. Um, okay then. So. And of course, uh, from Victoria University, they also recommended learning them in a situational context. Yeah, this means that um, you write down the whole sentence when you hear it, but you also use it in its context. Not only just the list of words, but all the words and the environment and the yeah, the context which is surrounding it. So this is why another reason why some of the TED talks are really good because you get to hear the words used in a natural context and in its correct environment so to speak yeah with lots of other words associated with that with that specific word and in that topic all right all right okay so um if you've got yeah so if you want that resource that i spoke about go to ieltspodcast.com forward slash ted and Maria, do you have any more, do you have any questions about that? No. No? All good? All good. Perfect. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs>